Thank you for joining us today on HXGN TV. I'm your host, Tim Palmer, and today we're discussing powertrain and vehicle dynamics using FEV virtual engine and Adam's car with uh, Mustafa Duyar, who's the virtual dynamics product manager at FEV. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Mustafa. It's my pleasure, Tim, thank you. Uh, can you start out by telling us a little bit uh, about FEV? Sure, uh, FEV Group is an internationally recognized powertrain and vehicle uh, engineering company that serves the global uh, transportation industry. So with uh, more than 40 offices uh, in four continents and uh, more than 5,000 employees, uh, most of whom are uh, highly skilled, experienced uh, engineers with uh, master's or PhD degrees. We offer a broad range of engineering services uh, in automotive industry mostly uh, for powertrain, transmission, vehicle, and driveline development. It's not limited to that. Uh, we also expanded our uh, capabilities uh, so that we also provide uh, services uh, for e-mobility, uh, telematics, infotainment systems, connected and autonomous vehicles. Uh, our uh, test software and testing solutions, also a global supplier of uh, software, testing equipment, test benches, uh, and, and, and also instruments. Can you, what, what, is, uh, what is Virtual Engine? Can you explain that to us? Uh, sure. Uh, virtual Engine uh, is a software for uh, simulation-driven powertrain and driveline development. Uh, let me first start with the history of uh, Virtual Engine. So Virtual Engine used to be called Adams Engine. Uh, so the relation with MSC software uh, starts with that. So the Initial development started back in 1990s with the tight collaboration between, it was called MDI those days, Mechanical Dynamics Incorporated, and FEV, along with other Adams Engine uh, consortium members. So then MDI was, you know, acquired by MSC, so our relationship with MSC software started. Um, so the, the first version was, uh, Adams Engine was, uh, released in 1998, and as the name implies, it was just for internal combustion engine simulation, including crank train, valve train, timing drive, accessory drive, piston and rings and bearings and so on. Uh, then uh, back in 2008, uh, FEV took over the IPs from uh, MSC software and rebranded Adams Engine as Virtual Engine. So the, but our tight collaboration between MSC software uh, and FEV has always continued and I believe it will always continue. The virtual engine uses the core technology of uh, Adams, which is most widely used worldwide known uh, multi-body simulation software uh, as numerical integrator, uh, pre and post processing uh, interfaces. Over the years, uh, we broadened the fields of application of virtual engine, so it is not limited to internal combustion engines only. Now we are uh, broadened to uh, driveline transmission uh, fields as well. So we introduced a new brand, so-called Virtual Dynamics, uh, which is a suite of products under which today uh, we have virtual engine and virtual gearbox. Great. So, what was the what were some of the goals or some of the motivations that you had when you're trying to couple, you know, virtual engine to Adam's car? Yeah, so, yeah. our goal was to provide a fully coupled, uh, detailed, full vehicle model consisting of uh, driveline, uh, suspension, chassis, along with uh, relatively higher fidelity engine and transmission model such that uh, this model was usable for simple open loop driving maneuvers and also for closed loop operation. It also allowed assessment of virtual drivability and ride comfort. So if we come to the reasoning or motivation, if you wish, uh, on one hand, it was to tackle the NVH phenomena of the vehicle. And on the other hand, uh, it was virtual calibration for drivability. 
Okay, on that topic of drivability and ride comfort, could you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Well, before that, maybe uh, let me first try to elaborate a little bit uh, on the vehicle and VH phenomena. Okay. So the engine vibrations not only excite the, the vehicle body in the uh, close field through the engine mounts, but also the speed and torque fluctuations coming from the engine travels along the drive line and eventually to vehicle body. So we use uh, FEV uh, VINS uh, method, which stands for VINS stands for uh, Vehicle Interior Noise Simulation, uh, to determine the possible improvements and tackle the NVH phenomena. So the base analysis revealed uh, two major contributions to the vehicle interior noise. So the first one was the high excitations uh, at number of different engine orders, especially the second engine order for the, uh, for the vehicle uh, in question. It was due to the lack of uh, mass balancing system in the engine. And the second is a resonance at a certain frequency coming from the drive line. So I can also tell you that uh, we achieved very good correlation between simulation and the measurements, and it was also published as a technical paper. So maybe now I can uh, come into the drivability and ride yeah. comfort. Okay. So basically, there are two interesting questions uh, to answer when it comes to ride comfort and drivability. So the first one is, there are the perception thresholds of human beings, so what are these? And the second is, which perception and feedback to the driver is desirable? And not surprisingly, these two questions are not easy to answer but it is clear that the vibration characteristics, which mean the frequency, the amplitude, and the duration of the vibration play important role. Some of the investigations also uh, indicate that human perception is probably less sensitive to acceleration itself, but the rate of change of acceleration with respect to time, uh, it is also known as jerk. jerk yeah. So here we see uh, the advantages of simulation because it is not possible to measure the jerk directly, but by using simulation methods, uh, we are able to calculate it. Um, also, uh, in, in the hardware, the vehicle performance is typically documented with measurements at a number of different locations, including wheel supports, uh, car body dome, car body floor, seat track, seat area, uh, steering wheel, and so on. And also, of course, the acoustic uh, radiated noise at the driver's ear. At FEV, we are more interested in vibration at the seat track, as the seating and steering um, parameters are highly subjective. So at these locations, uh, the displacements, velocities, and accelerations are logged. And these measurements are executed uh, uh, in typical and representative driving cycles uh, or driving manu uh, maneuvers like tip in, tip out, clutch drop, uh, or straight line acceleration, including gear shifting. So these are the measurement side of that, but all these also possible in simulation environment. So we can easily obtain the, the same results uh, using multi-body simulation. Uh, and putting uh, markers at those uh, desired locations. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, vehicle systems are really complicated, you know, and uh, you know, capturing the right physics is, is a pretty challenging task, that's for sure. Right. So, how do you combine? Uh, how did you end up combining a virtual engine and a virtual gearbox into the Adams car? Oh, it is it is very easy because you know, uh, Adams car and virtual engine use the same technology, the technology coming from MSC Adams. So the standard Adams car models do not include higher fidelity models of engine or transmission. Uh, hence, it's not possible to take into account the, the, the excitations coming from engine and transmission uh, for the vehicle dynamics in Adams car. So therefore, as a first step, we replaced the simplified engine subsystem in Adams car with the virtual engine model so that we could take into account the excitations coming from the engine uh, for uh, vehicle dynamic analysis. 
and this is done using a dedicated dialog box, which is uh, which becomes available if you uh, add virtual engine plugin in Adam's car, uh, and all the communicators, uh, subsystem interconnection stuffs are dealt automatically, such a slick way that user. Uh, do not need to worry about at all. Yeah. So, yeah, what, what are some of the typical applications that some of your customers use this, use this for? Uh, yeah, the typical applications might be uh, given the driving maneuvers or complete driving cycles, such as uh, NEDC, FTP, VLTP, or real driving cycles we can look at complete vehicle system excitations and the resulting uh, response of the system. So these can be, but not limited to, of course, an NVH behavior of the vehicle or using the drivability calibration expert of our calibration software called uh, XCAL. -X we can carry out virtual drivability calibration with respect to given uh, objective criteria. Another potential application area might be the system friction losses prediction okay. uh, for a given driving cycle. Okay. Okay. Well, well, thanks, thanks, Mustafa. We'd like to thank our guest, Mustafa. And uh, for more about FEV and the virtual engine and, and uh, virtual dynamics, visit uh, virtualdynamics.fev.com. And for more on HXGN TV or to watch additional episodes please tune in to hxgnspotlight.com. Thanks for watching.